Before you go ahead and start using the Spring Cloud Bus, you will see the problem that our microservices will face when it comes to configuration without using the Cloud Bus. And then we will see how Spring Cloud Bus solves that problem. So in the next few lectures, you're going to use a custom property in your configuration file called com.barat.springcloud.prop. You can assign it any value and then you will use this inside your REST controller class. The product REST controller in product service will simply use this value like this. It will read it from the configuration file and it will be injected here using the value annotation and we'll expose that value out using a RESTful endpoint so that we can see what value is being read. From the web browser, we can access the endpoint product API slash prop and you can see the value of that right here. You will first notice that as soon as we make a change here, it will not reflect on the web browser because the server is up and running, we need to restart it. Thanks to Spring Boot Actuator, it provides an endpoint called actuator slash refresh. So once our application has the Spring Boot Actuator enabled in the pom.xml, we already have the actuator when we worked with Hystrix actuator. There you see that Spring Boot Starter Actuator. All the actuator endpoints should be exposed out. So in the configuration file, you're going to add this management.endpoints.web.exposure include is equal to star. Once you do that, you can hit this actuator slash refresh with a post request. When you hit it, that particular microservice instances configuration will be updated. So you make changes to the configuration file here, the value of this property, then without restarting the server, if you simply send this POST request, that microservice will fetch all the latest configuration once more from this property file, from the config server. So all that magic happens behind the scenes for us. But the problem with this is, if we have multiple instances of the same microservice running, say on port 9091, 92, 93 and so on, when you hit this refresh on port 9091, only that instance which is running using port 9091 will update the configuration. The other microservice instances, the product service instances will still retain the old value. So in the next few lectures, you are going to run two instances of the product service, one on 9091, one on 1992 and see what the problem is when we do not use the Spring Cloud Bus, how the configuration updates work. And once you enable the Spring Cloud Bus, you need not do all those refreshes with a single refresh at the cloud bus level. All the microservices will get the latest configuration values, whatever you are changing. So first you will see or create the problem. Then you will solve that problem using the spring cloud bus.